Hi, my name is Kona Ferry, and I am the creator and developer of Pantograph, a transit tracker for all of Greater Puget Sound. Pantograph started as a side project, just wanting to learn a little bit more about how real-time transit data works, and I eventually released it to the general public, thinking, oh, some other people might be interested in this, and it spiraled into something much bigger than that. But it maps out the real-time locations of every bus, train, streetcar, and ferry in all of Greater Puget Sound across eight different agencies. And I'm also starting to do some analytics work with that. So right now you can see the different assignment history, what kinds of coaches get assigned to what routes, vice versa. And I'm also starting to do some analysis of performance, things like where buses get stuck, how often they're on time, that sort of thing. This is my second time at a New Tech event. I was last here in late June when I presented at the New Tech East Side event. So I would definitely have loved to have been here in between, but you know how schedules go. But the time I have spent here, I've really enjoyed. It's a great community, lots of different people to talk to and get connected with. And I really enjoyed being a part of it. I would probably emphasize that this was something that started as a side project. I started with absolutely no experience in programming or any sort of software development. This was just a project where I wanted to learn more about how something works and that required me to learn about software development and programming and all the fundamental concepts that go along with that. So I think that my story is one of learning from the ground up. You start with the, the very base problem of what do I need to do to accomplish this very first thing and keep working at it up every level and eventually you end up with something that's a real product. So. It's, it's been a long journey. It's still a long journey ahead of me, but it has been very rewarding and I, I've enjoyed it every step of the way. My personal website is KonaFerry.com. You can find me on all the social media. Uh, most active on Twitter, which is at Kona404. And my uh, app website is PantographApp.com. I'm going to keep, keep clicking the slides back and forth to try and avoid the slide thing. So my name is Kona Ferry. I am a senior at the University of Washington. I'm in an undergraduate urban planning program, but I'm also the developer of a transit tracking app called Pantograph. Uh, Pantograph is named for the part of an electric train that connects it to the overhead wire that helps supply it with power, just like the Pantograph apps uh, connects riders and agencies to vital information about the transit system. So you can find it at pantographapp.com. If you have an iPhone, I would encourage you to take out your camera, scan this, download the iPhone app. I just released this six weeks ago. Shh. Don't get your hopes up, Android users. You're talking to a longtime Apple fanboy. I'm sorry. Uh, so this started back in kind of late December, early January, just as a side project for me. I'm not a software developer by trade. I have learned every line of code that I have written going into this. Shout out to Stack Overflow in the back. Learned everything from you. Uh, so this has been very much a project that has uh, grown very a lot over time. I released it in late March to much more interest than I expected. I ended up with a Seattle Times article in early April. That was a very long day for me, uh, but it was overall really a really great experience. Uh, so we're going to jump into why this matters to start with. So we are all familiar with apps like One Bus Away that show us when we're sitting at a stop a list of estimates when different buses are going to get there. We've also all probably experienced watching, as it says, two minutes for five minutes and no buses come for no apparent reason, which is very frustrating. So what I'm doing is taking that same information and applying it in a slightly different way, making absolutely no claims about when any bus is going to be anywhere, and just telling you where it is right now so that you can see, oh, it's a few blocks up there, it'll be here shortly, which psychologically is very different from attaching yourself to the bus will be here in two minutes. Um, I also provide a lot more context for all this. Uh, so you can see here, this bus is right on time. If I'm at the next stop, I'm a happy camper. But all these buses are delayed, which is an indication to me as a rider that if I have a transfer to make or if I am uh, going to a meeting, that maybe I might need to plan on uh, some alternate options, if you will. 
As far as the technical side of things, uh, there, is, there exists a standard called the General Transit Feed Specification. This was developed by Google and TriMet back in 2005, 2006. You can think of this as essentially a plain text relational database. This is a worldwide standard used all over the world that uh, describes the entire schedule of a given transit system. All the buses, all the trains, when are they supposed to be anywhere? And this is great. This uh, provides all the schedule information for any app you've ever used. But real time is where things get interesting because that reflects reality. So there's a layer on top of that called GTFS real time that effectively updates the GTFS information in real time and uh, makes uh, uh, gives you more specific arrival estimates for different things. I'm ignoring the arrival estimates altogether, as I've already said. But I can combine these same feeds that power all the different ETA apps that you've heard of or not and use them for what I'm doing and showing this big map. So you can see here, this is a sample of one and a half of a GTFS real-time feed that lists. This is where a vehicle is as of this time. This is the trip that it's on, all of it. Um, as I move on from just mapping things in real time, I'm also starting to get into analytics. So this is a screenshot of a page on the website that shows, you can't even read it, don't even try, but it shows all the different vehicles for uh, a given group of metro, ve uh, metro vehicles. I am so running out of time. And uh, the distribution of where they go. This is not really interesting to riders so much as agencies and um, uh, uh, bus enthusiasts such as myself. Where things get interesting for riders is applying this trip assignment information to individual routes. This is information for the Route 40. It stops right outside this building. Maybe some of you took it here tonight. And I can look at this and see that 95% of the trips that serve this route are on those long bendy buses. So if I'm a rider and I'm trying to decide between two different routes, I might look at this and I might look at another route that might be served by shorter buses most of the time. And I might decide to take one of the longer buses because that might be less likely to be crowded and I'll get to sit down for the duration of my ride. It also has equity implications. You could see, are all the buses from the 90s with no AC system getting assigned to routes that serve historically underserved communities? That might be the start of a conversation that needs to get had with Metro. Boop, boop, uh, boop, boop, oh dear. Uh, so to run through uh, some challenges really quickly and wrap things up, um, I'm dealing with eight different agencies that all implement the same standard in eight different ways. There's an XKCD comic up here most of you are probably familiar with. I didn't put it up here, but I'm dealing with that problem. Uh, they also don't update their information as frequently as I might like. So there will be a bus that last reported like two minutes ago. And in two minutes, a lot can happen. Maybe it's still stuck at that intersection. Maybe it's gone 10 blocks and was right by you. I don't know. So I will say that Metro has told me it is funded and underway to improve those polling times. But for now, this is what we have. Uh, as I move forward, I'm starting to get more into the analytics. So right now, the trip assignments is kind of low-hanging fruit. I'm getting ready to get even more into things like performance trends. What routes are underperforming? What routes uh, tend to be delayed a lot? Where are our buses getting delayed, regardless of what route they're on? Metro can then take that over to SDOT and say, hey, maybe we need a bus lane on this particular road because our buses come out of there down eight minutes. Uh, so that sort of thing is what I'm starting to look at right now. Um, integrating traffic, of course, is part of this, and crowdsourcing positions. I now have this user base of people that have this app, and if they can tell me, oh, I'm on this particular coach, it doesn't matter what Metro is telling me or, or how infrequently they're telling me it. So I can get that number down from two minutes to two seconds because I can just get that information from somebody who's using the app. So there's a lot of different places I can take this. I've had the opportunity to meet with all the major transit agencies in Greater Puget Sound. Uh, many of them are really excited about what I'm doing here. I know the Sound Transit customer service folks use this a lot in addition to their own internal tools when they're producing things like rider alerts to get that out to, to their uh, uh, customers. So it's been quite a journey for me. Um, you can uh, find me and the service on Twitter. You can also send me an email if you have questions, but I'd also love to take some questions right now. Assuming we have time because I'm sure I'm very over. All right, quickly. <laughs> I try to pack a lot of information in there all at once. Yeah. Yeah. 
Google does not make that information available. Um, I would love it if I could. Now, there d it does exist. Um, that's what I would like to get into, yeah. Uh, there does exist a, 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 a part of the standard for a GTFS real-time information allows for agencies to communicate with their own counters, not just people using Google Maps, how many people are on board that bus, whether it's standing room only or not. None of the agencies in the area currently implement that standard, but I think that is part of that project I mentioned that is funded and underway at Metro. So that is something that will be very important going forward. Um, now, because I have also been working with them and talking with them about what I'm doing here and how we can help each other, uh, there's also possibility for getting access to the data that they generate internally because something like 60% of Metro coaches are equipped with automatic passenger counters. So if I can tap into that data and integrate that onto these pages and into the real-time information, that would help a lot too. In the back. Do you plan on creating an Android app at any point? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what? To, to expand on that slightly more. Uh, uh, I'm not going to rule out anything for the future. Right now, I am one person who is learning all of this as I go. And I'm a full-time student as well. So I've, I've got a lot on my plate at the moment. Uh, but so I'm going to ask you this, your last kind of question necessary. is, Kona, if someone in the community or some ones could help you to develop an Android <laughs> app, would you be open to talking to them about that so that many more people would be able to experience the wonderfulness you've created. I wouldn't rule anything out. <laughs> <laughs> I make no commitments one way or the other. But yeah, that's absolutely a possibility, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.